For as long as I can remember, I've always liked going off the beaten path, seeing where it goes, and seeing how I can get there. And I've always liked taking vehicles and pushing them to their limit, figuring out how they worked, usually breaking things in the process. And I've always had some project car I'm working on, from my first car and engine teardown of an 01 Cadillac. This right here is the first key turn. And that's it! That's it right there. To my second attempt at a 94 Suburban. This one was somewhat of a learning experience. And eventually, I was given a free pickup truck, a Mitsubishi Mighty Max, in exchange for helping out a friend of mine. From the moment I got it, I knew it was the one that I'd been looking for. We're gonna get pelted with fucking rocks. Now, unfortunately, with low ground clearance, absolutely zero aftermarket support for this 30-year-old Japanese imported truck, coupled with the fact that it was two-wheel drive, I needed to find something else that would work, something that could actually get me past the gatekeepers, and so I started looking. Now, I knew I wanted to stay with the Mighty Max platform, not only because I was familiar with it, but also because Every single place I went, somebody would come up and tell me a story of when they learned to drive in the Mighty Max, or they always had a story, and you never saw them anymore, and so it made it kind of unique. I spent weeks looking on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and OfferUp until I finally yeah. found one. The one I found didn't have an engine, or a transmission, or a title, but for $200, I couldn't pass it up. We trailered at home and the search for its engine and transmission and transfer case begun, and two months later, I'd find it. A 1983 Dodge Power Ram 50. The Dodge badged version of the Mighty Max. Identical in everything except the badging, it was exactly what I was looking for. The only trouble was, it was a thousand miles away in Eugene, Oregon. So naturally, I did what anybody would do, and I booked a flight to Eugene for the next weekend, with just enough money to buy the car, and just enough tools to hopefully get it home, if I could even get it running, since it had been sitting for five years. I didn't necessarily know what I was getting myself into, and I didn't even know if I could make it back, but I knew if I could make it back, it'd tell a hell of a story. And with just three hours of sleep, and a single slice of ready-made pizza in our systems, my buddy Steven and I headed off to see what we'd gotten ourselves into and see what the rest of the weekend was going to look like for us. And when I saw the vehicle that was going to either make or break this entire trip, I knew it was going to work out. Just a little help, that's all it needs. <laughs> then they got actually oil. They actually have oil in it. <laughs> Alright, sick. So this is it. This is our ride or die. 900 miles to go. Only way home. And on first glance, I think we'll make it. It's not the sketchiest thing I've ever seen. I've seen worse. Steven, optimism. That's what we like to hear. A hearty thumbs up. Let's see where we're going. With that, we got the truck loaded up on the trailer. The two sellers wished us luck on our journey and we set off into town to try and find some parts and see if this was going to be dead in the water from the start, especially since we hadn't actually seen it start yet. All right, so made it to the O'Reilly's. Got some crap from Walmart in the back. I got 
brake parts on order here, as well as a couple of fuel filters because God knows what's been through this fuel tank. And we're gonna see if we can get this thing running either here or back at the Walmart parking lot. Let's grab what we gotta go, get out of here. So I didn't know if it ran, and I know it hasn't run in a few years. So I went and pulled out the inline fuel filter by the carb because it looked disgusting. And if that's any indication of what I'm going to find inside those fuel lines, that's not a good sign. So the first order of business was for me to figure out the fuel system. So I was going to go ahead and drop the tank. I had Steven running down the street to grab a gallon of gas, so if we got it in the tank, we could start it and see if it'll run off its tank. We'd only been here for about an hour, but it was already time to start tearing into it because we really didn't want to be in this town by the time the sun went down. Now my initial reaction to seeing the fuel filter confirmed my worst fears when I pulled the tank and saw that it was completely full of rust and it literally had holes in the tank from how badly it was rusted. There was no way this tank was going to be able to be used. Now we had Steven coming back with the gas and we had no tank to put it in, but I wasn't ready to let that stop me just yet. So I forgot to record it. We hooked up. That's bad. It's a little smoky. But we got the thing running. It's only been like, what, an hour or less since we started working on it here? All I did was hook up a fucking fuel pump. The choke doesn't really work. This is an aftermarket car. I can double it if I have to. A little smoky. We gotta figure out what's up with that, check all the fluids, and see if we can get this thing driving. First test, see if it goes down on its own. That'd be a no. And within another hour, get it driving, we did. I think it's impossible to state the amount of relief that washed over me when I rolled it off the trailer. Because I knew once it was rolling at all, we were going to make it. I ended up getting about 15 feet worth of fuel hose and a bag of zip ties to go with the world's least safe fuel tank and just run it all the way to the gas can in the bed, which would work for now. I did bang on a shit ton before this. While we did technically have it moving, there was still a couple more things we needed to do before we could roll it off the trailer and return the U-Haul truck back to the place we got it from. It's kind of a weird way to mount a parking brake. <sighs> I'm not even going to replace this. Alright, status report. It is now 6 o'clock on day one. We are still at the O'Reilly. Really grateful these guys don't mind us working out here. Steven's tightening up the drive shaft. In the last couple hours, we've through, I've gone through and done the brakes. So it actually has brakes now. We've gone through, found out that fucking hole in the, in the fuel tank's not gonna work. So we have a jerry can rig back here with about 10 feet of hose. And that's that's JDM. That's, a, that's, that's mint right there. We found a power steering pulley under the seat and got that working got power steering now I got the carb uh, settled in the carb actually works it's a Weber carb it's not the one that actually came on there but it idles it runs fine I uh, found out we have one working headlight a super jank looking suspension Let's see can't really see it too well there but we got a ripped CV boot all our ball joints are ripped. Look, these the covers on them are. Still haven't driven this thing further than off the trailer, but we are probably about 20 minutes from taking the first drive. As soon as Steven's down there done with that, 
we're gonna roll out to a place where we can put air in these tires. Because while they're they're pretty good, honestly, it's no rot. They're all matching. They're all Falcons. They're uh, a little low, a bit. Still gotta get this battery mounted down. We get some clamps on the fuel line. But for only being here, I mean, we've been working in this parking lot what about four hours now, Stephen? Four and a half? Not quite five hours. Yeah. We're literally about to roll out of here. Five hours of work on a truck that hasn't run in, I think the guy said about four or five years. So I like our odds. Now, 6.30, still the first day. We are running, we are constantly driving, and we are about to see the new hundreds of power and actually control itself. Seeing as the truck made it around the parking lot, our next stop was to drop off the trailer and start heading south as far as we could get before it got dark. Stop number one, we made it 20 miles. It's a little hot. Um, we did make it to this rest stop. 20 miles with no issues. It wasn't overheating, theoretically. That's not what the gauge said anyway. The gauge said it was a little warm, but not that warm. Um, verdict is the headlights are ass. Might need to look into its cooling a little more. Might need to figure out if, why that fan doesn't work. I figured the cooling of the freeway air would do it, but I guess not. So, we're gonna sit here and chill out for a little bit. Possibly for a while. And, uh, see what we can get done. I'll update when I have something else. However, my documentation of this night is not great because my phone died at some point. The only things we really got done this night was we made it down to a Walmart about five more miles down the road. We got the headlights replaced, got the fan wired up, got a phone charger and some LED lights hooked up because otherwise we couldn't see. I couldn't see how fast I was going. I couldn't see the road. My phone was dead, so I didn't have a GPS. I couldn't record anything. And we actually forgot to return the key for the U-Haul truck, so we had to go all the way back to Eugene. The alternator ended up actually dying, so we couldn't drive anymore anyway. And we ended up just staying in town for the night. So we are going to cut ahead to the next day. It is now day two, and we have missed a lot because my phone's been dead for the last entire day. We're in Grants Pass, Oregon. We've made it about 150 miles. There is a small leak in the transmission. But other than that, we're rolling right along. It's now nap time because I slept on the concrete last night, so. All right, it is now 5.45 on day two. We are in Grants Pass, Oregon. We are about 200, 200 miles into our trip. A little more, give or take. Yeah, and we fill up before we head out of Oregon. The next thing we see will be the border sign. Let's go. Let's go. Now I didn't actually get that much footage done on the second day, 
probably because I'd slept for a grand total of an hour and a half. But basically, we made it out of Oregon. We made it to about Redding, another 200 or so miles down the road. Talked a bit with the sailors who were really impressed we'd actually made it that far and decided to get a hotel for the night and do the rest of the driving tomorrow since the truck had been running a little warm and had been pissing out oil like it was free. So with a fresh perspective, we plan on starting again in the morning. morning of day three. This thing's been parked out all night. This travel lodge in Reading. Yesterday we developed a little bit of an oil leak. Just a little bit. Rear end still pretty, pretty solid. Our fuel hose jerry rig is still hanging in there. You can kind of see that the uh, bolts on the transmission cross member are loose. I'm not sure if I actually give a shit about that or not. But we're gonna check in on the oil level. Cause I did have to fill it up yesterday. And I gotta make my way down there to check out that trans transmission fluid level too. Cause, well I did check the case, I never checked the actual transmission. Gotta see if she starts up first try today. That'd be nice. Second prime. There we go. Alright, well. <laughs> I guess I gotta go open up the fucking choke myself because I happen to know it doesn't work. So, let me go up there and do it. Yeah, that's why they burn. That's a problem for me. Plus, this is a kind of a rat's nest of a hack job electrical work for me. I, I had to wire in the fuel pump to that switch, because otherwise when you turn the key off, it doesn't turn off. So that's the only way I can actually get it to turn off without stalling it with the clutch. And I'm not trying to destroy the clutch. Let's get a quick look at our fluids. I saw it happen. Nothing on the stick. Maybe it's a bit of that. Bone dry. Yeah, well, I know there's oil in it somewhere because I had good pressure. That's the only thing that really works. I'm not sure if that's good. One of these is loose. There we go. Now, power steering has vibrated its way loose. It's down this pulley sitting in the bed, so maybe both in this nice size, but they run the power steering. That's cool. So, I guess we will try and get this thing mounted up a little tighter. Make sure that belt squeal. This one's looking good. Alternator still, it's hella out of place because it's the shiniest thing anywhere on this guy. So, um, what? Eh, it finally did start to stop. It still runs a little warm, but not unbelievably warm. It's tolerable. I 
Maybe I can do that. I guess too much faith in my damage days. Right, I'm gonna call down there and see if I can check that food level change. So, could not get the, uh, sorry, could not get the plug off the transmission. Do not have the right size wrench. My adjustable slips on it a little too much. I did make a quick and dirty funnel to get that coolant in here. Everything down there is looking tight, as tight as it can get anyway. I did just notice that we ended up in the same parking lot as the Google Street View car. So maybe our little shitty power ramp will end up immortalized on Google Street View, but probably not. Anyway, I'm gonna get some coolant out of there, put it back in here, maybe find what happened to the uh, the end of this. So I think it fell off in there a long, long time ago. So get that in there, get checked out of here, and we will hit the road. After an unfulfilling breakfast and a once over of the power rim, we continued south. Since we were going through about a quart and a half of oil every 150 miles, we picked up about two gallons of oil to get us through the rest of the trip, and we headed on our way. With 600 miles to go and only one day left to do it all, we were down to the wire. It is now everyone's favorite time. <laughs> time. Time to uh, fill up the gas and also bring the idle down a little bit because it's fucking a little bit much. How's that? Eh, still a thousand, we can get a little more. Well, that's better. Alright, now, the reason we actually stopped my fuel. Well, it's not empty. It's uh, it's low enough the hose doesn't reach anymore. So fill her up and get on, get on the way. We drove throughout the day, and we drove into the night, stopping once every about a hundred miles because we were getting about 23 miles the gallon with our roughly four to five gallons of usable fuel, and we didn't want to push it too far because. The only gas we had was a jerry can anyway. The whole trip was pretty uneventful, with the exception of the fact that it was getting pretty hot because we were driving through the desert, so most of our stops were just for gas and for water, and one stop for food, but we were just kind of dead set on getting back. As we entered something like our ninth hour of driving for the day, our final stop for fuel was coming up, and there was just one hour left to go. It was really starting to look like we'd actually made it. We are at the end of day three. 860 miles later. We couldn't make it the last 40 miles home because we don't have enough gas. Thanks, gas tanks. Pray for us. Now with motion dragging. Unfortunately, we have to make one last stop. What are you gonna do? Well, we've gathered quite a bit of trash on this journey. So it's specific trash that somebody paid for it. I finally got it to put gas in. Shut up, no, I don't want a receipt. Now we can finally move on. Ignoring all the gas I spilled. It's fine. So, 
so literally minutes ago, like 10 minutes ago, we left that gas station. It's steaming very gently. Well, yeah, but I think I'm safe. It overheated, of course. Like 35 miles to go. And that's when the coolant decides it's gonna have a moment. It smells pretty warm and toasty in here. The fuel. Oh, hang on, yeah. I guess I'll turn the fuel pump off. I don't want to kill the battery. Fan's not on. Key's on, though. That's why. Fan died? Yeah, the connection for the fan came undone. I was thinking, man, it's hella quiet in here. Alright, so. No wonder we can hear the music. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Oh, the fan's not that loud, but. I suppose. I'll rewire the fan. And we got this thing like 30 minutes to cool itself the fuck down. Not fucking even. I'm gonna turn it on and let the fan cool it off. It'll, it'll cool off faster with coolant circulation. Faster than it'll sit in this parking lot anyway. I'm not gonna be stuck in a fucking Verizon parking lot. 30 miles from the finish line. Not today. We're actually close enough that you're sure Apparently, looking at the engine, they lost their water. How much? Maybe I should have. That's cool. Still in there. Maybe one. Gotcha. The free Costco water for getting a renewed membership. Shameless plug for Costco. Always shopping Costco for your cheap, cool Except we also didn't buy anything there. No, we didn't buy anything. Didn't need three gallons of oil. You fucking stand outside. You like a case of free water? It's 102 degrees. You're damn right. I like a case of free water. A fool. It'd be in the director's cup, but you won't get to see it because we didn't record it because it was that upsetting. Right. my phone was dead, so we had wired up a fucking charging I just saw something that was so heartbreaking. I had to check the last video to see if I just didn't notice it. Turns out I didn't notice. The fucking belt for the water pump is gone! <laughs> no fucking shit it over here! There? No? No! It's gone! How could it not? It flew away! <laughs> Never to be seen again! I didn't even notice. I came over here and rewired the goddamn fan. And somehow didn't notice that the water pump belt was missing. That Oops. Bad. It is. Just a bit. Dude, it's the middle of the night and everywhere. Eh, yeah. That is problematic. I suppose we'll have to deal with that. This type didn't work. Get my shoes. I can see why this might work better. First, you loosen the old man. Maybe. Just the right size.
with my shoelace. I can pinch it and pinch it and I'm gone. Look how I still can't believe we lost that belt and didn't notice it. Right. Wow. That's your team. <laughs> That's like super irritating. Goobers. Grade A goobers. If I saw it later, I'd probably pick it up. Lighter kleptomania. It's a real problem, folks. I don't want to be tying my shoe with that anymore. Sorry, Steven. I owe you a pair of 97 cent Walmart laces. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Those were pay less, sir. Pay less. Oh, you're screwed, dude. Right bar. Right in rain, dude. It fell from you guys should miss this. Let's hope not us. Let this work. Rest in peace, my, my shoes. Done. Might as well try. Never gets old. Although the shoelace did seem like a good idea, it certainly wasn't providing enough tension to actually spin the alternator. I said I doubt it. It's loose now. I wonder why it lost tension. Maybe a shoelace. What do you try, Steve? Your shoelace is not tense? Not normally. Apparently, yeah, fucking not. It seems like that'll work for the water pump. Yeah, we kind of need both. I mean, do we? Sure, we need the water pump and the alternator, but do we need the power steering? I already suggested we just steal one off the power steering. Oh yeah. You said you think it might be too short though. I, I'm not too short. I think it's too long. Too long. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm down to try. Might as well. It's not like we're going anywhere. Yeah, I guess we do a long time. Until five o'clock tomorrow. Kept the call. You're dead. Absolutely. <laughs> Dad, could you bring me an extra belt? Sorry, I'm stranded. I saw in your wallet. He has exactly ten fifty five. Enough to cover tax. Lies. I don't appreciate this slander. You're trying to make me look bad. I'm on holding the camera.
Oh, it's on the other shoe. So you know, over in the parking spot. So we, uh, that happened. Now we got full strobe light effects. We got the alternator working with the belt and the power steering. You know, yeah, the power steering. Now we just gotta figure out how to get the water pump turned. As long as we can do that, we can roll out of here. I'm gonna shut this off, because I think it's probably fine. It should be charged. Unfortunately, it doesn't turn off the key. I got it. I'm sorry, clutch. Stall it. Sorry, clutch. We fucking made it. We made it those last 40 miles with the, uh... <laughs> Hold on. I can't, I can't just describe it. It won't do it justice. Oh, you know how we have that, uh... We little... Bitty bitty broken belt. It'd be great if it was gone. That'd be funny. I find that humorous. So we got a makeshift version 2.0 right here. This is the zip tie belt for the water pump. <laughs> and we took the power steering pump's belt, so we haven't had power steering for a while. And we just put it on the alternator because I figured that was a little more important than steering. I can I could strong arm the steering. But zip ties are on the water pump. We only had to stop a couple of times to replace it because zip ties don't really hold up. But come on. Come down. Made it. You too could drive 956 miles with a field truck if you so desired. And I'm doing it just so I can rip it apart to make this one the truck it always should have been. <laughs> you lose this round, but I sure is fucked up. But that's a story for another day. And we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. And that's it. I didn't end up keeping the Dodge for long after this, but today the drivetrain's installed in the four-wheel drive Mighty Max, and eventually I'll finally be able to hit the trails with a hell of an origin story. Thanks for watching.